today we are talking about another important announcement. Um, and I have with me my good friend, Gabe, who has been a longtime member of Data Hub. Uh, if you're not familiar with Gabe, uh, I have a quick and interesting uh, video to play for all of you. So let's see how that works. So this is a video from a few years ago, um, February 19th, 2021. It was one of our first town halls that Actual hosted, where we launched um, essentially a new UI for Data Hub. That was that was kind of the thing. We were launching the React new React front end, and uh, this is what it looked like. And John looks about the same, actually. He looks just as young. So it's a good job there, John. Um, I'll play this for you um, so that we can get a quick sense of what we were talking about back then. It's a, it's always fun to have a quick kind of uh, travel back All through tab, history. Which allows you to see uh, different entities grouped by type. So you can see we have dashboards, charts, users, and data sets. Uh, from here, you can go right to the details pages. Pretty pretty similar to what the Ember and now we're moving uh, on to... I went directly to the city of San Jose and looked at okay. all the quick permitting companies and a Bodu was... All right. Uh, what, what lies in store for it. And also a uh, plug for the office hours, I'll be hanging out there too. And if anyone has some idea of something that they want to extend or a feature that they'd like to see, you can come and we can hack together and try to get something working and show you, we'll show you around the code base and uh, try to make it as easy. So that was Gabe, also looking just as young, um, you know, a few years back, uh, introducing tags and themes to Data Hub. So that was that was then. Um, and then we've made a lot of progress. Obviously, the product doesn't look like this anymore. Um, you've probably played around with the open source product um, and you've kind of seen what it looks like. So we'll let's let's talk about what we are talking uh, about today. So we've been working on uh, something for uh, a few months now. Uh, internally, it's codenamed Acryl 2.0, also known as Project Alchemy. And it really started out with um, looking at hundreds of interviews that we did with a lot of our uh, community members, as well as customers, to understand what was working and what wasn't working with the current user experience. And we heard a couple of things. You know, Basically, we found that tech forward teams really love Data Hub. Data engineers, streaming engineers, operational people, they love it. It's a technical UI and they get it. However, the moment you get outside that uh, primary data uh, data practitioner, core data practitioner persona, um, BI analysts, data analysts, PMs, they start getting overwhelmed. They're like, well, this is too much. Uh, it's a lot of information and I want a simpler experience. Uh, but our goal is really to be that single pane of glass for data discovery and bridge the gap between these personas. So that's where we started and said like, Let's let's learn more and let's understand what it is we need to do to get better at serving uh, both of these uh, personas. And here are a few examples of quotes. And you know, if you've um, uh, deployed Data Hub at your organization, you've probably heard something like this as well. Like, oh, we landed on the homepage. There's too much. We're confused. What do we need to do here? Um, I didn't. I couldn't quite figure out how to get to lineage. And then, you know, a one week later, once they actually do, it's like all good. They don't talk to you again. But that first step is hard. They realize it's a powerful tool, but they don't quite know how to get to business definitions, user interface uh, input, um, native types, like why do you call charts, uh, worksheets, charts? Uh, can you just call them worksheets? Um, and then, of course, a lot of... Uh, Questions around the queries, like people want to see queries that was used to create lineage uh, and not just see table to table lineage. And this is just a few quotes that I'm pulling from uh, hundreds of these conversations we've had. So many, many more. And so with that uh, in mind, we kind of set out to develop a new uh, set of principles for how the product was going to build, uh, be built and what the UX would look like. Uh, none of this should be surprising. We want to make sure that there's a clear information hierarchy. We want to make sure that there is progressive disclosure, so you're getting exposed to complexity gradually and not just getting completely overwhelmed on the first go. Being able to effectively navigate to outcomes, so if I want to get to lineage, I should be able to get to that quickly. If I'm looking at a ton of search results, I should be quickly able to understand um, what this asset is and how it's how I should use it. 
Uh, being able to personalize, being able to support multi-persona experiences um, inside the product. And of course, <clears throat> uh, design that's driven by user research. So doing user research interviews at scale and then using that to drive design. So these were kind of the principles that drove um, the redesign. And um, with that, I will hand it over to Gabe to once again, show us what the future looks like. And uh, and then we'll uh, close up with some uh, thoughts about the future. So with that, Gabe, I will stop sharing and have All you right. take over. All right, thank you for that intro. Always nice to take a trip down memory lane. So um, I think it is relevant to show that because we, we saw, I think we saw a huge jump between what Shoshaka was showing and the what exists in the open source today. and. What we're seeing, you know, with people trying out this new Acrylic UI is a similar shift, and um, just in terms of what what's being unlocked. So the whole point of working on Data Hub and having Acryl and installing this type of tool is to bring all the different parts of your organization together. It was never meant to be, hey, here's a tool for a few people to use, but it's supposed to be that place where everyone can come together, collaborate, get insights from each other, see what's going on with each other, and. I'm, for that to be successful, we need to meet each user where they are. So a lot of what Acryl 2.0 is, is letting you bring everyone into the fold and having the product and the tool respond to who it's working with. So when I log into Acryl 2.0, the new UI, the first thing I'm going to be presented with is an introduction page where we can gain some insights about who's, who's showing up here. So um, in this case, maybe I'm a BI analyst and I primarily work uh, in Looker. So I can go and select that as the tool and this is my persona. And when I hit done, the homepage is gonna be prepared specifically for me so that I'm not seeing every single thing under the sun, getting overwhelmed and then closing out my browser tab. But I feel like, hey, this tool is made for me. And we are seeing that that is working out on the adoption side because we are starting to see when people come into this tool now with this new UI, we're seeing engagement increase quite a bit when you look across different personas. So I land here, my whole homepage experience is going to be curated based on the tools that I work with, what's important to me. Now, when I go do a search, that that's going to feed over. So it's not just something where I saw that on my homepage, but it's actually something that carries over across my whole experience. Um, so I'm gonna do a search here and I'll be able to then filter by, you know, am I, am I interested in dashboards? Am I interested in charts? So I can go and choose what in Looker I want to specifically look into. Um, as a next step though, I wanna kind of peel back the curtain a little bit and switch personas. So I teased search a little bit, but we've also made a number of improvements to search as well that um, make it much easier for me to find things when I'm going through a more technical search. So this first flow is just, I'm logging in as a BI user. I wanna explore in a safe curated environment. So all my searches, my homepage, that's gonna work within uh, the scope down set that I've been assigned to. Same with domains all of these are gonna just be curated for what's prepared for me. Now I can go ahead, switch my persona out to be an admin type persona. So I'm gonna clear this off and flip into this admin view. Now I'll see everything else, a lot more content exposed to me. Now, when I go to do this search for account again, I'll see a lot more results from all sorts of different platforms. Um, the first thing you're gonna notice is we're all, it, within search, we're going to make it a lot easier for me to quickly get a sense of which result I want. So we're obviously going to help you with search ranking and we're pulling in signals like popularity and freshness to do that search ranking. But maybe I'm interested actually in finding a business term. So we've made filtering much more intuitive and native in the search experience. So I can quickly flip in and say, actually, let me look for glossary terms and I'll see the glossary terms that match account. You know, maybe I'm interested in finding a data product that uh, that's referencing account information. I don't actually want to go through sorting through every single table in there, but I want to find a data product that I can trust and it's high quality. 
So I can quickly flip over to data product and I'll see any data product that match, matches my search. One other thing that you'll notice is in the search side, we've added a sidebar that quickly lets me get a preview of what data product uh, or what at, uh, what search result I'm looking at and just get a quick hit of you know what what's the highlights of this this result. So I can use this to understand if I'm getting a few different results that look promising, which one I actually want to dive into. So I can see I actually have two accounts data products here. And you know just looking at the title, it's not clear which one would be right for me. But I can see here, this one has good owners. It's got a domain. It has documentation assigned to it. Um, and when I flip over and look at this other one, I can see actually in the documentation, looks like this data product is not maintained and should be deprecated. So I have a sense, OK, I want to avoid this one. This is the data product I'm looking for. And I can click right into that and have a confidence that this is the correct search result. So with the improvements we've made to search, it's just much easier to navigate and a lot fewer clicks, as Shrisaka was saying, to get to the information that I need. The last piece I wanted to highlight was um, in the new UI. There's a lot to show, but one other just quick thing that we can, we can highlight here is the browse-based experience. So what we've done is bring browse over into domains and data products being the primary way to navigate through a browse type view. Um, and this lets users without a lot of technical background or not a clear understanding of, maybe they don't know how your Snowflake warehouse or your Databricks warehouse has been structured. When I flip over into domains, I'm able to see a business organization of my concepts. So rather than navigating through schemas and databases, I can browse through nested domains. Each domain is able to have a homepage with clear documentation and data products that it publishes. So if I log in for the first time, I might not know where to start, but I can always go to the domains page, browse through the top level domains, maybe financial products is looking good to me. I can expand that out, look at the subdomains, see what's in there, look at the documentation for each one of these, and then finally look at the subset of data products that each domain publishes. So this type of browse or hierarchy based browse using things like domains and data products to navigate makes it a lot easier for someone who's not super in the weeds technically, not in and out of the data pipelines every day to find information that's relevant to them. So I'm able to look at some domains, look at nested domains, find a data product that's relevant and do all that navigation without having to worry about what tools am I talking about? Is this in warehouse one or warehouse two? I don't have to think about any of that. I can just think about concepts. And as the final stage, a data product is able to offer a, um, output port and saying, hey, here's the table that you want to go um, and explore. So I did say I, I actually had one more thing I wanted to show, aside from the, high, the, the, um, the navigation. So I think most of what I've showed so far is landing on the homepage, what that curated experience looks like, how I can search to find something that I want, even if I'm in a really complex situation. Um, and then the browse navigation. The last thing I wanted to touch on was once you get to an entity, what kind of improvements we've made there. There's a lot we've done to refresh the, the um, asset pages, data set pages, and chart pages. Um, one thing that I really want to highlight, I think is particularly cool, is what we've done on lineage. So one focus for lineage has been for us to make even complex lineage graphs easier to consume and analyze. So We've added a few handy techniques that make it a lot easier for me to take a long, complex lineage graph and see what's going on. One is I can go do this expand all action. So I can quickly go out, expand out a really large lineage graph with lots of hops and get a sense of table level dependencies um, without having to do too much work. From there, I'm able to go and expand columns of a given asset. So maybe at this Kafka topic, I want to know for a specific field how that's being used. So I can go and click on account ID and that's going to specifically highlight across all these different dependencies as it goes through warehouses, as it's pulled into ML tools and BI tools, how a given column is flowing through all these different dependencies. So it lets me even take these very complex lineage graphs and ask uh, specific questions like how a column is being used. And I'm able to get that insight very easily uh, with our new lineage UI. 
So this has really unlocked a lot of power for people to analyze uh, the dependencies that they already have. And we'll still, of course, support impact analysis that lets you uh, go and uh, you know, look at that lineage information in a tabular way. All right, well, th those are some of the highlights that I wanted to choose. I don't know how much time we have, so I, maybe I can take a pause here and switch back. Or Shoshanka, anything else that you wanted to highlight? Um, no, you hit them all. You. And uh, thanks, thanks so much for for walking through <laughs> the whole UI experience. Uh, Niaj will make a will make a comeback when we uh, chat about uh, when we chat about tag propagation. So. So hold on to that. We'll see the lineage page one more time. And I just need to go back to my slides. There we go. So you probably have a bunch of questions and we I have a quick set of questions and answers ready for you for the future. Um, so question one, how can I get this experience today? So we're, we're currently, uh, only offering this experience on Acryl Data Hub. So that's where this has first landed. And that's where most of the development has happened. Second question would be, will this come to the community edition? So we're stay tuned for that. We are currently scoping um, which parts of this experience uh, can oh. be released to the Data Hub community edition. Um, we're still working on the timeline for it. So I don't have a firm answer right now. Um, as you can imagine, there's quite a bit of technical complexity, but um, we will let you know as soon as we finalize that timeline. And then the third question is probably gonna be, hey, what happens to the existing UI? Um, so our expectation is that we're gonna phase it out eventually uh, once the new experience is released. Again, timing TBD. Uh, we de definitely know that a lot of people are using the current UI and it's in wide use. You probably are running a bunch of forks. Um, you know, we will we will take our time because it will take us time to get this experience or parts of this experience out to the community edition. Um, until then, we will rely on the community members to help each other out if you're uh, on the um, old UI. But for now, stay tuned for updates. Um, we will let you know as soon as we have firmer uh, timelines.